which is the anchor which we are going to rest the other prayers we need to pray here today the mystery of mercy the mystery of mercy sisters what did i say and brothers this will take us to some place here today but to be very attentive and listen carefully we read from the book of lamentations we are going to look at some interesting passages then i'll put these passages together before we now go back to our prayers lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22 lamentation 3 from 22 you find lamentations after the book of jeremiah and here we read one of the most popular choruses in christendom lamentation 3 22 it is of the lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness it's from there we have the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. It's from this passage that song was taken. Look at it again from verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Straight away you know there is something known as the Lord's mercy. And that mercy has capacity to prevent you from being consumed. And if it were not for that mercy, who would have been consumed? Many of us have done a lot of terrible things that we ought to have been consumed. But that mercy has retained you and has brought you here. We need to find out how to key into the mystery of mercy. They are new every morning. Look at somebody very early in scripture who received mercy. A decree had gone forth in heaven against Sodom and Gomorrah. And the decree was that everything there should be destroyed. But in Genesis chapter 19... Genesis 19:16. One man received mercy. All he received was mercy. He wasn't qualified for it, but it was mercy. He ought to, to have been consumed because he was part of them, but he received mercy. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 16. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife. And upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. How was Lot and his family delivered from that danger? It was through the mercy of God. And in verse 19, it said, Behold, now the servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy. He too knew that it was mercy that delivered him which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. Lord was aware that it was that mercy that delivered him. I know there will be somebody here this morning who will connect to the mystery of divine mercy. And you shall receive help from above. If you are that person, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Now in this popular psalm that we read, the most popular psalm in scripture psalm 23 that's the most popular psalm in scripture psalm 23 verse 6 which we know and we read every time it says surely 
goodness and what? And mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's what that psalm says. Goodness and mercy. When those two things follow you, it is then you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Note that scripture too. Go through the Psalms against Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Very powerful Psalm. Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercies endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endure forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. For his mercy endure forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endure forever. He doeth great things because of his mercy. Understand this, beloved. Now let's go briefly to the book to the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, we begin to see a little bit about the mystery of mercy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. We see one interesting thing about the mystery of mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful. What shall happen to them? They too shall obtain mercy. So mercy attracts mercy. That's part of the mystery of mercy. Mercy attracts mercy. The blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's a mystery of mercy. Now, if you go to the book of Romans, chapter 9, we'll read another mystery of divine mercy. Divine mercy. This is where we need prayers seriously here today. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showed mercy. Understand this very well. That the mercy of God is something you need to ask for. It's not your power, your strength, but it's that mercy that we need. Many have done things that qualify them for double hellfire. But yet God extends the hand of mercy unto them. That's the mystery of mercy. In the book of James, there's a final one we want to read before we go on very quickly. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 13. James 2, 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has shown no mercy. And mercy rejoiced against judgment. Let's now look at some hard facts about mercy itself. Then from there we begin to pick our prayers. Mercy is compassionate treatment. Mercy is disposition of being kind and forgiving. Mercy is forbearance. Forbearance from inflicting punishment on an adversary or a lawbreaker. Somebody is an adversary or a lawbreaker and is qualified for judgment but is pardoned. Mercy means compassion that causes one to help the weak, the sick, or the poor. Mercy will favor you without you being qualified for it. Mercy will fight for you although you are weak, yet it fights for you to make you strong. Mercy can judge others for your sake and then judge you for his sake if you are not careful. Mercy is a double-edged sword. If you say you are qualified for it, you score zero. But when you show mercy, you are attracted to yourself. Mercy is not a license for committing sin. Mercy is different from forgiveness because God is merciful even when you don't sin. Mercy and what we call grace in the Bible, they are inseparable twins. Mercy is not getting what you deserve to get. The punishment he deserves, he didn't get it. That's mercy. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Good things you don't deserve. 
That grace will save you, but the mercy will sustain you. Mercy will eliminate the pain, but grace will cure the disease. Mercy will offer you relief from punishment, but grace offers you pardon for the crime. That's why the Hebrew word for mercy is very interesting. The Hebrew meaning means to get inside somebody's skin. You feel what they are experiencing and then pardon them. Mercy is the gift given to the guilty. Some time ago, some holy men, they grabbed a woman from the streets and dragged the woman to Jesus. Say, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery. In the very act of adultery. According to the law of Moses, they said, we should stone this woman. So, but what do you say? They wanted to trap Jesus. If Jesus said, John Stoner, they say, you are against Moses. If Jesus said, Stoner, they say, but you preach to us, love your neighbor as yourself. They wanted to trap Jesus. These men drag this woman to Jesus. So, we caught this woman in adultery. In the very act. But it was interesting that they brought the woman, but they didn't bring the man. The Bible said Jesus did not say one word. But he bent down and began to write on the ground. I can guess correctly what Jesus was doing. All those men who were gathered, who was writing their own sin down one by one. As they were reading it, they were going away. As they were reading, they were going away. By the time Jesus finished writing and he lifted up his head, they had all gone. And Jesus turned to the woman and said, Woman, where are thy accusers? He said, They have gone. He said, Neither do I condemn you. But go and sin no more. Here we are men who themselves were in need of mercy. But they dragged somebody. They wanted to deal with the person. I want you to understand this very well. So that when you begin to key into this mystery. You will draw the hand of God to do awesome things in your life here today. Mercy is now found in a state of innocence. Mercy is an investment that brings compassion. Mercy is a sacrifice. And mercy will triumph over judgment. Even if your parents have handed you over to witchcraft judgment, I have a word from the Lord to you here as you are sitting there this morning. His mercy shall deliver you. In the name of Jesus. Mercy is ability to heal others. When you live without mercy, you die also without mercy. This is why you have to be merciful too. The Bible tells us in Habakkuk chapter 3 that mercy can be found in appeal in prayer when you pray mercy can be found in the, in the divine authority mercy can be found in the power of god mercy can be found in the measurement of the almighty the bible talks about the tax collector and the pharisees who went to the temple to pray the pharisees say oh well i'm this i'm this i did that i pay my tithe i do this i do that i do that i'm not like that sinful tax collector over there but the tax collector, the Bible says he did not even lift up his head. But he prayed a powerful prayer. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. The Bible says he went home justified. The prayer of blind Bartimaeus in the Bible was, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And that cry of mercy put a break on Jesus. When you cry out for mercy, it puts a break on Jesus. There is somebody here this morning who will cry out for that mercy. And your cry will put a break on Jesus. If you are that person, let your amen be loud and clear. The commonest prayer in the book of Psalms. You know, the psalm is a compendium of warfare prayers. The psalm is prayed red hot prayers. It was used to warfare. He understood warfare. So the man prayed acidic, red hot prayers. In fact, some Bible teachers have called some of the prayers of psalmists that they are curses. But you see, when you have an enemy that is ready to bite you without remnant, then you use your greatest weapon. The commonest prayer in the book of Psalms, beloved, have mercy on me, O Lord. Can I hear you shouting that loud and clear? There is somebody over there who needs to shout this louder than anyone else. So our greatest need, beloved, is mercy. And we constantly need that mercy of God. We must see our needs of God's mercy. We must appeal to God's mercy. 
We must cry to God for mercy. We must proclaim God's mercy upon our lives. The Bible says the mercy of God is great. The Bible says the mercy of God is rich. The Bible says the mercy of God is manifold. The Bible says the mercy of God is plenteous. The Bible says the mercy of God is everlasting. The Bible says the mercy of God is tender. The Bible says the mercy of God is new every morning. We've read that. The Bible says the mercy of God is high as the heavens. The mercy of God, the Bible says, is manifested to those who fear him. And the mercy of God, God will give it to whosoever he will. And those of you are very, you are used to reading the Bible very well. When you get to the picture of the tabernacle in the Bible, there is a place inside that tabernacle called the mercy seat. Showing that if not for that mercy, people will have been consumed. That's why in the psalm you see mercy referred to in hundred different verses. And when you combine the Old and New Testament, mercy is referred to in 261 different verses. So one of the most powerful prayer, if not the most powerful prayer you can pray for yourself, is, oh God, arise and have mercy on me. Let me hear you roar like thunder as you shout it loud and clear. Let your voice roar like thunder. Shout it again loud and clear. You see, the, the, those prayers you are praying, you know it's already getting results. As you are praying it, you are right there. When do you need his mercy? You need his mercy when your victory is not complete. You need his mercy when more cars are already gathered around you. And they say, well, you have been serving Jesus. Let us see what that Jesus will do for you. You need his mercy when unbelievers are already asking you, where is your God? You need divine mercy when satanic audience are waiting for your downfall. You need divine mercy when evil powers are challenging God in your life. You need divine mercy when they are trying to encourage you now to follow worldly pattern because you are not getting results. You need the mercy of God when you find that in all, in everybody in your family, they are following an evil pattern and you don't want to follow that pattern. Because most of the battles we need to fight is the weakness, is energized by the weakness of our father's house. As you are sitting here this morning, there are at least 30 ancestors from which problem can flow into your life. At least 30 different human beings. So when you get to that, you need mercy. You have your father and your mother. You have four grandparents. You have eight great-grandparents. Then you have great-great-grandparents, 18. And great-great-grandparents again, 16. I thought you had the 16 to 8, get 24. You had 4 to 8, get 28. You had 2 to 8, get 30. So each of us, we have at least 30 ancestors. And from the life of each of these one, problems can flow into our lives. Your parentage determines the kind of battle that you fight. Because if the children of Israel did not go into the land of Egypt, their forefathers would not have any reason to want to get out. All, some of us, it is just divine mercy. Don't deceive yourself, beloved. This is not the time to speak American English or British English. This is the time for serious prayer. You know your father is the chief of the masquerade in the village. Your grandparents was a native doctor. They were native doctors. Before that one, those ones that came before, they worship the waters. Of course, they have accumulated iniquity for you before you were born. You need this mercy not to follow the pattern of the iniquity they have prepared for you. You need the mercy of God when the enemy has already sucked you dry. Plenty of people come to the mountain of fire and miracles mercy after the enemy has sucked them dry. And it's not good for that to be so. In fact, in in, in everywhere now, the mountain of fire and miracles ministry has been converted to an intensive care hospital. We are all in need of God's mercy. You need His mercy when the depths are mounting up and the income is getting low or none. You need the mercy of God when the Lazarus of your destiny has already been embalmed and buried. You need His mercy when yokes multiply. You need the mercy of God when the assembly of unbelievers and children of the devil, are, they are telling you, you better join us. You have tried this thing. It's not working. You better join us. You need the mercy of God when you are being encouraged to be disobedient to God in order to move forward. You need the mercy of God when shedding tears have become a regular affair and your eyes are turning red every day. 
You need the mercy of God when the road you are traveling is getting rougher and rougher and more dangerous every day. You need the mercy of God when you notice, when you notice a finishing fever in your life. You don't finish well. You need the mercy of God when you are gradually become an expert at finishing things that you should not have started at all. You need the mercy of God when you want to smile and it's crying that comes. You need the mercy of God when your eyes are already red and the whole of your face is darkened with blood from the blows of the enemy. You need his mercy. 1985. A woman came to me that time. And by the time she explained herself, I was a bit taken aback myself. Number one, she was brought into church in this plaster of Paris, the POP on the leg. That was the first, first day they brought her. They brought her on Sunday. She was supposed to go and remove that POP on Monday. By the time they removed the POP, the leg just stayed straight like stick, refusing to bend. That was problem number one. The husband was retired prematurely from the place of work. Problem number two. Problem number three. She, all the savings and all the money she got from working for government for 25 years, she used to build a shop, a shop, a trailer ran into that shop, destroyed everything, and the shop caught fire, plus the trailer. You will after that will, will be enough to even finish somebody off. Until one morning, she has three daughters. These three daughters, age, age, age between 15 and below, they came to her after morning prayers. They said, Mommy, what and who are witches? Mommy said, Shut up. Don't talk about witches here. Talk about Jesus. We don't talk about witches here. We talk about Jesus. They said, Mommy, answer the question. Who and what are witches? Ha! Must, I said, Shut up. I said, Mommy, you must answer the question. She now said, Well, uh, witches are people with evil powers. They harm people and trouble people. Say, Thank you, Mommy. Say, well, that definition is, we'll take it from you, it's correct. So, all, all we want to inform you this morning is that the three of us are witches. And we hold our meeting in this sitting room. That's problem number four. That's what she brought to me that day. And when I heard, I said, wow. Okay. Uh, I had plenty of people to see. I started counseling around 11 a.m. after the service. Because I knew our home could take me some, a while. So I said, Madam, you just sit in the corner over there and begin to pray these prayers. Just be praying there. And she kept praying by herself. I was busy talking to other people. One hour she was praying. Two hours she was still praying by herself. Three hours she was praying by herself. I did not go to pray for her. I was far away from where she was. All of a sudden, a prayer changed. I said, my daughter, right there where you are, I want to send my fire into your life. And when I send that fire into your life, your life will change. She prayed to the level, she began to prophesy. My daughter, I will send my fire into your life. And when I send that fire into your life, it will destroy what has implanted into your body. Receive my fire! She was the one shouting, receive my fire. She was the one shouting, yeah, 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 fire, yeah, yeah. She was uttering the prophecy. She was shouting. And she went on, I on. And after a while, she said, now, that the things eating your body has been shaken off. It is now time for me to straighten your leg. It's time for me to straighten your leg. Say, so you leg, hear the word of the Lord. Become normal. And we had come. We abandoned all cancelling. So now, turn out to a film show. No, I did not pray. She was the one doing the prayers. We saw the leg bending. She continued. Now, my daughter. It is time for me to bring your three daughters down to their knees by disgracing their witchcraft powers. And again, she started praying. Within the next 10 minutes, the three daughters were in church. This was our. Nobody prayed for her, but she received what you call mercy. And that mercy delivered her. Beloved, there is only two things that can keep a person from receiving the mercy of God. Number one, is unconfessed sin. Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have what? Mercy. Shall have mercy. Unconfessed sin 
will keep divine mercy away from you. Secondly, unforgiveness will keep mercy away from you. This morning, we want to connect to the mystery of divine mercy. We want to cry unto God after the order of blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus didn't know which specific prayer to pray. But he understood a prayer that is a general prayer that can put a break on Jesus. After his general prayer has put a break on Jesus, then Jesus asked for the specific mercy that he needed. I said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I said, thy faith has made thee whole. Prayer for mercy is not prayer you pray like a gentleman. It's not prayer that you put one hand in your pocket. It's not prayer you pray and your body does not know you are praying. Blind Bartimaeus prayed his own prayer. He was sweating. It connected to the mystery of divine mercy. It is to that mystery I'm inviting all of you to this morning. When you begin to cry for mercy here today, situations that are stubborn shall bow. When you begin to cry for mercy today, where the enemy say you will not reach, you reach there. When you begin to cry for mercy today, even if you have been ordained to die, you shall live and not die. When you cry for mercy today, the words of man, the clinical prophecies against your life, the economic predictions against your life shall be completely cancelled. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. If you are here this morning, I say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to key into divine mercy. You are here, you are not born again. But God has brought you here today. Don't waste time. Whatever you are, why all eyes are closed? Run very quickly to the altars. Jesus is waiting for you here. Jesus is waiting for you. On to Jesus I of you at the altar, I congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life. Close your eyes. Bow down your heads. I want you to pray after me now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from this morning, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. Let your anointing be upon their lives. Let them experience the touch of Jehovah. This decision make it permanent in their lives. Keep them standing by your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes and look at us at the altar here. You've taken the most important decision in life. Right away you are, our counselors will discuss with you. Listen to them carefully. The rest of us, let us all go down on our knees. Go down on your knees. And ask the Lord to forgive you of any sin that will prevent you from having mercy here today. Because this is a day of mercy. And it will be a tragedy if you go on with a plastic experience. Talk to the Lord yourself. Tell me any sin in my life. That will prevent me from having mercy. Forgive me, Lord. 
Amen. Let's rise up on our feet now with a loud voice. No instrument, no instrument at all. With a loud voice. Lift up your voices. Let heaven know that you are in his presence here today. And sing this song loud and clear. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. Steadfast love, steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. to start with. Pray after the order of blind Bartimaeus. Immediately we start this prayer now. There are some people here. The enemy gave you a satanic dream. And since that dream, things have been upside down. All of a sudden, as you begin to pray, a strong man shall walk out of your body. As you pray this prayer, there are people here that are sick because that sickness is a family pattern. All of a sudden, you will feel a giant hand upon your head. And the sickness shall vanish. As you pray this prayer through, there are some who came here, they've been hearing strange voices. Strange voices. Those strange voices speaking to you shall be silenced. As you pray this prayer, you, that woman over there, that a stubborn spirit husband says you will not have a child. All of a sudden, there will be a volcanic eruption in your womb. And the yoke of that spirit husband shall be broken forever. As you pray this prayer, as many people, and when I say as many people, I mean as many people as are here today. And there are satanic objects growing in your breast, growing in your womb, growing under your armpit, growing in any part of your body. Or you can feel a stony object in your body. All of a sudden, you will feel the anointing of God fall upon you. And that yoke shall be broken. Now listen to me carefully. Immediately I begin to ask you to pray now. And the miracles begin to happen. Don't hide. Immediately you check your body. And you find that the sickness has disappeared. Run quickly to this altar. So that we are able to put a seal on it. So that the enemy will not put it back. I am not asking you to come out if you need prayer. No, no, no. Once you notice that the healing power of God has touched you, that person here with a strange infirmity on the skin, immediately will begin to pray now. That infirmity will clear away. The cold in the head and in the chest, as you begin to pray now, it will be melted away. And if you are that person, somebody was calling your name, you don't know who the person was. But since that day, the power of death has been pursuing you. All of a sudden, you will feel a break. And you shall be instantly set free. 
How many sisters here want divine mercy this morning? Let me hear the sisters shouting this after me. Oh God Allah! I show me great mercy today. Sisters, can I hear you shouting this loud? And... Is that the best sisters can do here this morning? Brothers shout it louder than the sisters. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Ask for divine mercy. Pasopola kaya bo shendera bo konde. Daribo sopola kaya bo shendera ba. Bakatenda kaya bo shanda. Yes. Thou power in the name of Jesus. Receive his mercy. Let your cry put a break on Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the power of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Check your body now. If that your healing has manifested, run quickly to this altar. That's right. Check that breast. Check your womb. Check your armpit. Come quickly to the front. Once you know that the Lord has touched you. Because his power is now going from person to person. That's right. That skin attack has gone back to the center. Something is happening to somebody over there. There is a witchcraft cage holding your life. It's broken now. It's broken. Broken now. It's broken now. Somebody over there. You have an issue of blood. The Lord has arrested that issue of blood now. Yes. The cloudiness of the eyes is being cleared away. Now you can see more clearly. That's right. Masekaya Boshenderaba. That person who stepped on a fetish object. And your legs have been rebelling against you. Check those legs now. The power of God is touching you. Right there where you are. This second prayer, pray with boiling anger. Something great is about to begin to happen now. In as many lives as you pray this with boiling anger. Every power assigned to make God a liar in my life. Can you shout this loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can shout it, beloved? I still want you to shout it more than that. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Deal with that power now. Today is today. Just be set free. 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 Masekaya bo shentera ba. Pastor, to make God a lie in my life. Just. Yes, 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 yes. Masekaya bo shentera bo suntela ba. Aha! Every power. Assigned to make the Almighty a liar in my life. Damn! Spirit of the living God, move, 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 move. In Jesus' name we pray. That one is here. One leg is shorter than the other. That short leg 
It's been pulled. Been pulled. Been pulled. And it has leveled up with the second leg. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy that sat on your visa has somersaulted from that seat. There are 10 persons here. The enemy keeps speaking to your head and keeps asking you to pull off your clothes on the streets. It's an arrow of insanity and witchcraft fired against you. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of that power is broken now. That's the power of God coming upon you. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's number ten. Aha. Masekaya Boshendera Bokopola. Yes, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shout this with boiling anger. Desert power. Desert power. This one with only anger. Can you shout it loud and clear? Assigned to trouble my star. Somebody needs to shout this loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. Masakaya Bushendera Boko Sente Laba. Dakatara Bosente Yaboko Shente Laba. Ripi Aliketende Yabo Shente Laba. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha. Things are happening. Lay your hands on any part of your body where there is infirmity now. Lay your hands on that place. And then we will shout this loud and clear. My Father! Have mercy upon my Lord! In the name of Jesus! That's right. Begin to ask for divine mercy. Jesus. Something is happening over there. Receive your healing. 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 The power of God. In the name of Jesus. Masekaya Boshende Rabokopola Baraba. Manna Kantenda Rabo Sopola Kaya Boshente Raba. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. It is time for new organs to begin to manifest in bodies. The Lord is starting from the eyes, from the brain. The intestine, the liver, the kidney, the womb. Something is happening over there. Makate sepende ke ya boshente. Terebo soponde ke ya boshente. Aha. Yes. I have a word to somebody over there. The Lord said you have been down all your life within the next two weeks you shall be lifted up in the name of jesus aha thank you jesus thank you jesus check your body very well once the hand of god has touched you report quickly to the altar here father i thank you for your children here cover their testimony and miracles with the blood of jesus let your anointing 
that break out every yoke. Come upon all your children here. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Say, my father. Behold my family. Have mercy. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and cry to the heavens. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody came here this morning, and when you came here, you as if the, your total body does not belong to you. But right now, your body has been renewed. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Shall three Jericho destroy now? Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to somebody. Tell the person. The man of God has been mandated to pray 21 prayers for me. Can you say it to your friend? All those prayers shall become testimonies for me. Amen. Begin to bless yourself with all kinds of blessings. What you want the Lord to do before this year runs to an end. Begin to prophesy it upon your life. Amen. Bring out your prayer letter now and hold it in one hand. Bring out your prayer letter, hold it in one hand. Hold your prayer letter in your right hand as I make these 21 prophetic pronouncements upon your life. Make sure that your amen is loud and clear. Father, I decree by the decree of heaven that as many of your children as are gathered here today, you will contend with whatever is contending with them in the name of jesus i decree by the decree of power and by the decree of heavens that any dragon power contending with the star of anyone here the dragon power shall be disgraced it shall be disgraced it shall be disgraced it shall be disgraced in the name of jesus Any evil mark upon anybody's life, let that mark be wiped out by the blood of Jesus. I decree by the decree of heavens that those that hate you shall be put to shame. They shall be put to shame. They shall be put to shame. They shall be put to shame. Any power that is assigned to put off your light, I command that power to die. In the name of Jesus, I decree upon your life that whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, begin to shine brighter, 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 brighter. In the name of Jesus, let the confidence and the boasting of your enemies dry up now. In the name of Jesus, within the next 10 days, receive uncommon testimonies. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus, I decree by the decree of heaven that your future shall be full with miracles. I decree that celebration shall abound in your house. In the name of Jesus no matter how many they are no matter the volume of the wicked powers that are monitoring your life they shall be put to shame 
they shall be put to shame. I decree right now that this year the enemy will not use you to balance his account. This year you shall possess your possession. Every yoke of disappointment and failure at the edge of success and breakthroughs be arrested now. 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 I decree by the decree of heavens that the Lord will deliver your enemies into your hands. In the name of Jesus. And any power assigned to kill your glory shall be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move upon every organ of your body. And let the organs of your body be energized by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, heavens, I call upon you now that the way you stop Pharaoh, the way you stop Goliath, the way you stop Senakeru, every stubborn enemy of your children, stop them. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any power planning to announce your obituary this year shall die in your place. In the name of Jesus. I decree upon your life you shall be a victor. Not a victim. You shall rise. You shall shine. 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 In the name of Jesus. The weakness of your father's house will not overpower your life. And the miracle of come and see. The miracle that men will open their mouths in wonder. Receive that miracle now in the name of Jesus. Every point written in this prayer letter. Let them receive answer by fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. A louder amen. A louder amen. Let us share the grace in fellowship.